Have you ever struggled to make your NPCs feel dynamic and intelligent? In my last video, we explored state machines and their potential to simplify complex behaviors. Today, we're taking it a step further. The focus? Using state machines to create behavior trees for NPCs like enemy AI. Imagine your NPCs adapting to players in real time, spotting them, chasing them, and attacking when the moment is right. With behavior trees, you can unlock organized, efficient, and scalable AI systems. Let's dive into how to make your NPCs smarter than ever. So, what exactly is a behavior tree? Unlike a simple flowchart, a behavior tree organizes your NPCs' actions into a hierarchy of tasks, each with specific conditions. For example, an enemy NPC might prioritize attacking a player, if close enough. But if the player is out of range, it might choose to chase instead. Behavior trees allow you to layer complex actions with precision and make your NPCs respond dynamically to changing situations. If you would like to see how to set up a basic zombie prototype, then watch what I do. Let's jump into Roblox Studio. Start by creating your NPC model. For this tutorial, I will go with a basic R6 character, then give it some basic animations. Once that's ready, we'll start setting up the tree. The easiest method is to use the community resource Btrees v5 found on the dev forum. I will leave the link in the description if you would like to download it. Then you will want to import the module script into replicated storage so we can access it later. To attach the tree to the zombie, we need to create an initialized script. To do this, you need to create a server script in the zombie and name it something like zombie controller. Now I will show and explain each part of the script so that you can try to understand how the behavior tree will work. The first part of the script is me referencing all of the things I will need to use later on in the script. Things such as services, the behavior tree module, and also some of the zombie parts such as the humanoid root part. To access the tree within the script, you must use the create tree function in the btree module. The object is necessary as it acts like a storage place you can access at any time during the tree. So I referenced assets I might need such as the zombie itself, and any settings that might affect the zombie such as its attack range. The last part of the script is where I run the tree so that the zombie can come to life. To create the tree itself, head over to the plugins tab within Roblox Studio and look for B trees. Then. While the zombie is selected, press the Create button where the plugin is. You will know if it works if the Behavior Tree menu appears instead of the 3D workspace. Now it's time to start creating the tree. Since I'm showing you what to do, I will only show the setup I used, but if you want to know how some of the other nodes work, then you can head over to the Help tab to see what they do. If you need more help, then head over to my Discord, which I will leave a link to in the description. So. For my setup, I used a combination of sequence, task, and succeed nodes. The tree works like this. Once the zombie comes to life, it starts in the idle state. In the idle script, I made it so that the zombie looks for the closest player within the zombie's range. Then if it finds a target, it returns with success and heads to the next sequence, which is chase. It's the same concept with the chase sequence as if the target is within attack range, it will then return succeed and the zombie will attack the player. The scripts are placed within the task nodes, which is like the brain behind the zombie. I will go into more detail when I show you what is inside each task node. Before I show you the scripts, make sure you place the tree in a location you can access later. I like to place it in server storage, but replicated storage is okay as well. Just make sure you change the reference in the zombie controller script to the location of the tree. The first task node is the idle script. Each task node will have three functions, start, finish, and run. They are pretty self-explanatory since the start function plays at the start, run continuously plays until either success or fail is called, and finish is played after the run. I set up the script like this. In the start function, I just placed a print function to check the tree has been run, like a debug. Since there was no need for the finish function, I left it empty. Then, within the run function, I looked for the closest player within the zombie's distance. I'm already assuming you know the basics of Lua, so I won't go over how I got the closest player. 
After I found the closest player, I made sure to change the target which I referenced in the zombie controller script before, and then I returned success so that I let the tree know that a target has been found. The chase script is much longer since this is where I managed all of the pathfinding. If you find what I put is too overcomplicated, feel free to change some of the script to fit your preference. Also, keep in mind I used the simple path module to handle pathfinding, which helped me cut down on the code needed to set up pathfinding. I will leave a link to the dev forum page in the description. To start the script, in the start function, I again used a print function to allow me to see if the chase script plays. Then I use the simple path module to set up the pathfinding on the zombie so I can play it and stop it when I want. For the finish function, I just made sure stop any ongoing pathfinding to prevent issues such as looping. The run function is quite complicated so you can check the comments I left on the script and read it while I explain the code to you. So, firstly I get the target which was found from the idle script and grab the distance from the zombie to the target. With this distance I can check for a few things. I first check if the target is within attack range. If it is, I simply return success to play the attack script. If not, then we go to the next step, which is checking if the target is outside of the zombie's range or vision. If it is, then I simply return fail. The last steps are simply just me checking for any other issues such as preventing duplicate pathfindings and making sure it stops if the zombie dies, etc. The attack script is quite simple. Again, in the start function, I use a print to make sure I know the attack script is playing. There is no need for the finish function, so I leave it blank. Then in the run function, I simply make sure there is a target, then I do one last check to make sure the target is within the attack range. If it is, then I simply play the attack animation and remove some of the target's health. I made it so that this will keep running until the target is outside of the zombie's attack range in which it will then return fail and either head back into the chase script or into the idle, depending on the target's range. If you did every step correctly, then you should get a result similar to this. What I like about behavior trees is that I can easily make new characters by simply editing existing ones, meaning I don't have to script a new NPC from the start. Instead, I can reuse old trees, which saves me a lot of time. For example, I made a simple tank zombie by tweaking the simple prototype zombie tree. There is a lot more you can do with behavior trees, which I'm not going to cover in this video. If you want, you can join the Discord, I will put down below, and I can help explain any part you don't understand. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if you have any other video suggestions, please leave a comment and I will try my best to make it.